And welcome back. As mentioned earlier, uh, this week our own uh, HTV's Martin Foss had a chance to speak with the director of the Bureau of Safety and Environmental Enforcement, Scott Angel, as he was in Homa to give a presentation about the past, present, and future of oil and gas exploration in the Gulf of Mexico. Martin? All right, Keith, thank you very much. And as you just said, Scott Angel is with us, the, the director, and certainly the program you were talking about and sort of gearing up the audience for, uh, Mr. Angel has been talking to the SCIA and going across the state really promoting this project. And I got to be honest, Scott, I just went through the program quickly and everybody who was calling me saying you have to get Director Angel on your show because he's got an unbelievable presentation on what's happened offshore. Right. And so I saw a little bit, and I'm eager to learn more. Sure. But what made you want to put this together, first of all? There's a lot of research and a lot of effort. What made you think that this would be productive? Because actually seeing is believing. Right. You know, at the end of the day, the, the offshore numbers in terms of production for 2018 were incredibly high. So we had the highest oil production in the history of the country offshore in 2018. But my instincts have told me for a time that we have two Gulf of Mexico's. We have one called the shallow water Gulf of Mexico and the deep water Gulf of Mexico. And the deep water, no doubt, is rocking and it is providing those good numbers. Mm -hmm. But the other province, the shallow water province, that province that has been around since 1947, where there's been 50,000 wells that have been drilled, is in a different state. It's a state of decline. The, the production in the offshore deep water has actually camouflaged some of the problems in the shallow water. And you and I well know when you take a look at the coast of Louisiana and you start in Cameron and Vermilion and Iberia and St. Mary and Terrebonne and Lafourche and Jefferson and Plaquemine and St. Bernard, all of those places mm -hmm. have had their economies rise over the last 50 years by some of the activities in shallow water. Mm -hmm. We believe there's some more opportunities there but we got to start managing it a little differently. And I took that passion and those instincts and took my know-how, I guess, really to better connect with people here and kept asking a series of questions that put us in a position that we had a story to tell. And today we came to Homa. We came to the epicenter of shallow water uh, mm -hmm. construction, shallow water exploration. And we told that story and folks said, hey, I think you've, you, you hit on something. So we're happy to, to share it with the audience. You know, when I was young in business, we started in 82 filming the station started in 85 and I always would tell people I'm not putting all my advertising in the oil field companies and gas companies because it's too cyclical to go up and go down then one day when I got a little older and wiser I said well the people spending money with me on the peripheral they're all dependent on the oil and gas companies so indirectly we're all dependent on the oil and gas companies so that is what makes us tick? Certainly when you think of south of Highway 90 and south of Interstate 10, mm -hmm. whatever business you in, somehow you in the oil and gas business. Because mm -hmm. as goes the oil and gas economy in a lot of ways, so goes mm -hmm. the banks and the insurance agencies and the automobile dealerships mm -hmm. and the furniture places and, the and hospitals. on and on, the hospitals and mm -hmm. on and on and so forth. And uh, so such a driver. And, and, and again, I think we discovered as we've looked at the, the, the data, you know, a couple of things I will share with you is oil production only in the shallow water. And when we talk about shallow water, it's important that the audience understand what we're talking about. We're talking about water depths of 200 meters or less. Mm -hmm. So we kind of have a division as we keep track of the numbers. When we talk about shallow water, we talk about 200 meters or less, deep water 200 meters or greater water depth. But in the last 20 years, oil production declined 77%. Natural gas production declined 92%. When you have those kind of declines, you would think that the federal government would start uh, pushing the panic button and say, hey, we got to do something. These numbers didn't happen overnight. These numbers have been happening. The people in this area have lived it for the last 10 to 15 years. Mm -hmm. This administration, however, said, we're going to do something about it. Mm -hmm. So I was assigned to, go, to be the champion and put together uh, the statistics that could tell the story that could get a different policy here. I had President Dove on yesterday, and we were talking about Senator Bill Cassidy's bill that would bring us from 37 and a half percent on offshore drilling to 50 percent for coastal parishes that's encouraging if we could get it 
past. Certainly, again, when you when you stop and think of the contributions, right, the mm -hmm. significant contributions that this state has made uh, to the overall uh, nation when it comes to not only uh, providing the energy, but providing the royalty dollars that come from it, it makes sense to, to share some of those dollars and mm -hmm. more, um, more and more of those dollars with the states. And, you know, one of the things I'm very proud of in my service in to Louisiana is that we passed a constitutional amendment locking up those federal dollars for coastal restoration and, and, and hurricane mm -hmm. protection. So, uh, you know, to the to the the, the, the idea is that my job is is not to decide who gets those funds. That's the job of Congress. My job is to help make sure that the pie is big, that there's a lot of mm -hmm. money uh, that is being generated. And when you take a look at shallow water, shallow water provides an opportunity for us to grow the pie for America. Louisiana will fight and get its share. I'm confident of that. My job is to help grow that pie, make sure we do it safely and environmentally sustainable. All right, so not only educate me, I want you to educate the audience because the O'Neill Mall Brews, the Roy Fletchers, the Gordy Doves who were calling me saying, you got to get Scott Orange on there to show this presentation. So obviously what you showed impressed them. So I want the audience to see what controls all the things here and, and all the 12 parishes we hit. It's dependent on this. So. I'm going to give you the floor and let you teach us a little bit. Good, good. So if we could kind of maybe uh, kind of key up the first uh, slide. And, and certainly uh, this slide uh, clearly shows uh, the Gulf of Mexico. And again, uh, you have the states there. Uh, and, and you have that, that line, that deep water and that shallow water line, uh, which again we, uh, we depict as 200 meters more or less. So next slide. And while that was the previous Gulf of Mexico, I thought we'd have a little fun and talk about <laughs> a new world order in this, in this Gulf of Mexico. And if you take a look at it, it started over there in, in, in Austin with LSU beating uh, the Texas Longhorns and the Saints uh, and the Houston Texans and the Saints and the Dallas Cowboys and then LSU, Mississippi State and LSU, Ole Miss and LSU, Auburn and LSU, Alabama and then uh, LSU, Florida and then the Saints, Tampa Bay and Jacksonville. So there is a new world order. It starts in Cutoff, Louisiana at South Lafourche High School because uh, if you stop and think about it, although the Saints are on a roll right now, they first got on that roll with Bobby J. Bear, and now yeah. LSU is on a roll, and they got <laughs> on that roll with, with, with Ed Ogeron, and, and two boys from South uh, Louisiana, in particular Lafouche Parish, uh, bringing national fame uh, to the Cajun Nation. Very proud. Uh, I thought your audience would appreciate this right. slide. Quite frankly, this slide got more reaction than any of the uh, slides that we presented on the oil and gas, but you would expect that. But they can that. relate to that. I just got through writing a song, Bayou Blood, Bayou Blood, two local boys born in the Bayou Mud. There you go, baby. <laughs> love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. So as we kind of go on through the next yeah. slides, you get to see uh, here is Coach O going to the next slide. So I'm just saying, you know, I, I, obviously everybody's excited about Coach O. I am too. I was on the board of supervisors when Coach O was hired. I'm the one that made the motion to hire him. Uh, and certainly everybody's taking their share of credit right now. And I, I'm reminded of the John F. Kennedy quote in April of 20, uh, 1961, victory has 100 fathers and defeat is an orphan. Uh, I was with Coach O from the beginning. Uh, I was with Coach O uh, every year. And I am so proud of the Cajun Nation. And what was so respectful to me is after that Alabama game, in a real, real sincere way, the passion and the sincerity that he felt not only for the university, but for the state of Louisiana. And I would say a, a big old salute to Coach O and primarily to his parents for raising an incredible man. All right, I want to hold that thought. We're going to take our first break. When we come back, we're going to really get into the meat and potatoes of what this is all about. Don't go away, folks. You're going to want to hear this because this is what drives a train in the whole area. So you're going to want to learn. And I'm eager to learn myself. And we got a great guy here to tell us about it. Don't go away. <laughs> 